We begin with politics where earlier in the week, the heated governorship race in almost all the 28 out of 36 states where election held finally ended. All the results so far declared shows the ruling all progressive Congress APC winning 15 states. People Democratic Party has nine liberal, has nine and Labour Party and New Nigerian People's Party have won states each, while election in Adamawa and Kebbi State were both declared inconclusive by INEC. The anointed candidate of the Kanu State Governor Omaru Ganduje, uh, Simon Lalong, Amino Tambawa's secretary, and Samuel Term of Benue were defeated by the opposition parties. In sweeping victories, many APC governors secured re-election across the six geopolitical zones with extensive triumph at the state assemblies. APC governors who secured re-election included Babajide Songolu of Lagos State, Inuwa Yahaya of Gombe, Maimala Buni of Yubi, Abdullah, uh, Abdullahi Sule of Nasirwa, Dabwa Biodun of Ogun, Abdur Abdul Rahman Abdul, uh, Abdul Razak of Kwara and Babagana Zulum of Bono State. For the People's Democratic Party PDP, there were nine victories, including two returning governors, Sheikh Makinde of Oyo and Bala Mohammed of Baoshi. Now joining me in the studio is uh, Justice Ojeno, a lawyer and a political analyst. I also have Ni Saliu, a political analyst via Zoom. Ni, are you there? Good evening. Me. Good evening, Mr. Ni. Good evening. I'm here. Thank you for having me. All right. Welcome to the show. Let me begin with you. Let's have your take on APC taking the lead with 15 states, PDP with nine states, Labour Party and New Nigerian People's Party and MPP with one state each. Any surprises? No. I will tell you that our democracy is evolving. Mm. It shows that uh, the Nigerian electorate is becoming more aware and more involved in the state of play. Uh, the first election we had, the presidential election, you will notice a different pattern from the governorship election. In the present election, the party like Labour Party, for instance, won about 11 states. Uh, even PDP was very competitive. Now, this is a different ball game entirely. States like Koyo, for instance, the first election, the APC won. The second election, the PDP uh, won. So it just shows that gradually the Nigerian electorate is becoming more aware is becoming very capable of, you know, a different a voting in different patterns along the same election, depending on the candidates that are in a particular election. So for me, it, it's a challenge to the average politician who is campaigning to sell himself a lot more to the people and show uh, that he has things to offer. Uh, so th there are no surprises. There are no surprises at all. It just goes to show again that politics is local. You know, uh, in the last election, you just said now, and that is what is on record, that APC has won about 15 states. There are two states, for instance, that are, where INEC has declared inconclusive. For instance, those two states, uh, Adamawa in the first election was won by PDP almost in the last line. But here, it, it's becoming a struggle for BDB to win again. In fact, the news that came out for us was that APC has won the state. It said like Ogun State, for instance, APC won the sli last slide in the presidential election. When it came to the governorship election, it became very close. I think the governor won with about 3,000 votes. So it shows the different pattern in the behavior of the average electorate. And it's a very good development for our country. It will put a lot of positions on their toes. And it shows that even uh, no matter what the education, the level of education of the, uh, the average voter is, he knows the difference between one candidate and the other. Then, of course, because policies is local, and uh, the governorship and the House of Assembly election were more grassroots than the first election. So it was more competitive. The people that put themselves up for election in that election were people known to the average electorate in their different constituencies, 
very, they were very close to them, and they were they had different choices. More parties participated uh, at that level, so it became very stiff and competitive. Even Labour Party, that won about uh, eleven states in the presidential election, was only able to win Abia State, one state. And you can see that that's a far cry from the initial about 11 that they won. So it shows a major shift in the behavior of the average you know, voter in Nigeria. And if you ask me, it's a very, very good development. All right, the, I will get back to you. Let me come to you, uh, Justice. What are your impressions about the outcome of KB and Adamawa State and how INEC handled the whole situation there? Okay, uh, for me, I think that uh, they were mature in the way they handled it, and they were compel compelled by provisions of the law to, to handle it in the way they handled it, because if they had gone ahead to actually declare, based on, based on what was on ground, they would have really flattered the provisions of the law. There's a principle in Section 62 of uh, the Electoral Act that talks about uh, the margin of lead uh, principle. There, there are times when uh, and margin of lead uh, simply means that if the votes that are still yet to 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 go out, to be cast, or maybe there was violence, there were cancellations at a polling unit or a set of polling units that amalgamates to a ward or local government, that if those numbers have the capacity to swing the election in a particular way mm -hmm. or otherwise, then the electoral officer, the returning officer, must declare the, the uh, election inconclusive and, of course, supplementary election be, be conducted in order that definitely and finally a person who scores the lawful votes, the majority of the lawful votes cast eventually comes up to, to be the winner. But again, uh, the Binyani woman in Adamawa is, is saying that some of the votes that have already be, been counted for Fintiri of mm. PDP are votes that result out of violence, stuffing of bo ba ballot boxes and all that. Those votes should, pursuant to Section 65 of the Electoral Act, be cancelled. You know, uh, INEC has that power, especially the Commission has the power, pursuant to Section 65, to review elections if it, if it checks all the surrounding circumstances. So. Binani is asking that that be done. We don't know whether that will still be done because there's still the seven-day period. So within the seven-day period, maybe after the seven-day period, we'll be able to say, okay, maybe INEC uh, allowed Fintiri to actually go ahead with the votes that he already has, which will make victory very, very easy for him. So I think that it is high time for INEC to actually take the whole bull by the horns and, and do what's needed for all right, Nini, I'm, I'm back to you now. The issue of irregularities, INEC has pointed out in 18 local government areas. What would you like to see amended in Electoral Act to tackle some of these issues? Look, the laws are there. there is, the issue of an amendment does not even arise. It's the issue of implementation of the laws. There are laws that are taking care of, you know, uh, uh, electoral offenders. So it is when these laws are, you know, implemented to the latter, that's where you see that people will be very careful during an election. You know, the greatest inducement to crime is impunity. If people continue to go scot free when they commit offenses, you know, that are being punished by stipulated laws, then you continue to see this kind of act. So for me, it is, it is not an issue of amendment of, you know, existing laws. The issue is implementing uh, the dictates of the existing laws. That's what it is. So if people have committed electoral offenses and are punishable under several sections of the Electoral Act, as amended already, so <laughs> they should just implement the law and punish those people. And there are several, you, you know, of uh, you know, punishment that have been stipulated. So it will depend on the uh, level of crime. So we have had the election the last two, three weeks. I next should show that they are, you know, they have the will to, you know, to pursue some of these things by actually trying those people. I heard one of the uh, former senators complaining that the people that were arrested somewhere in Kano have not been charged. In fact, some of them have been released. When you're going to hear news like this, it will give impetus to will-be offenders to go ahead and commit such offenses. 
So right. the issue is not, you know, creating new laws or amending the existing one. Mm. The issue is implementing the existing one and punishing offenders. Mm. 